I have two deaf boys. They're so rare and so unique. I'm blessed, and they are blessed because they can play with their sign language and their home environment, which is a safe space for them. When I watched them sign, I realized what a treasure sign language is, and I thought about how to preserve it, and I've realized it's through the arts. My objective is simple. I just want my boys to comprehend their place in the lineage of the language and the richness and the complexity of it. As I was growing up in eighth grade, I wrote a story, and the teacher offered me two options, whether to sign that story to the class or to speak it. And I chose to speak it at that time. Because through my upbringing, I had been told repeatedly that speech was superior, while sign language was sidelined. And I had never been taught to translate from the written word into a signed performance. And growing up, I never had any deaf role models until I was 16 years old. And for the first time, I saw a deaf poet, Peter Cook. And his linguistic expression just blew my mind sky high, such that when I landed, I had this realization about what my thoughts were about sign language being so simple and for communication only. I realized that it had these other modalities, that it had this depth and this fiber to it. I became a teacher, and I taught kindergarten through third grade, and taught sign language to deaf students. But that three times of exposure per week for 45 minutes was those students' only safe space to play with language, to experiment, and to build on their concepts. Can you imagine not having any time outside of that, and returning to their home environment, potentially without communication, as compared to my boys, who are utterly privileged? But I don't want to limit them to the two role models of myself and my wife. I would like their diet of role models to be varied and full. Just as you wouldn't feed broccoli consistently every day to the child, you'd want to provide them with a varied diet of fruit and vegetables, because the more nutrition you're able to offer them, the healthier their development. Because what happened to me should not happen to any other deaf children. That's why I left the classroom and came to the world and founded my own Deaf Poets Society, one component of which, of three, is ASL SLAM, the mission of which is to provide a platform to create a safe space for the Deaf community to play with their language of science and to learn to play and to have fun with that. And we pull, out, uh, we pull in other talent and other artists to express themselves on stage so that they can share their work and inspire that audience, because we want to seed the next generation of talent. And we want to water those seeds and grow them up so that we can have more deaf poets and storytellers and role models. Another component of that Deaf Poets Society is establishing additional chapters of ASL SLAM in cities around the country with the same mission as the home event. And then the third component is touring around the world. We just went to Jamaica, I just went to Cuba and Norway, and I'm going to Australia next. Regardless of the various eco socioeconomic statuses of those places, we are traveling and bringing that mission to those places. You know, each country around the world has their own sign language, whether Australia or any of those other places I mentioned. So we use international sign to communicate, to respect their language. And I have a roster of poems in a visual vernacular. which makes a more image-based approach so that we can reach out to those international deaf communities around the world. 
So I'll show you a poem now, and the interpreter will not be speaking during this. So maybe some of you could follow that and visualize it, maybe some of you couldn't. But this is visual poetry, I feel like it's a, a visual, a soundless visual musical composition. And this poem was the first poem that I crafted in the visual vernacular that had that built-in meter to it and rhythm. And that allowed me to begin to collaborate with a variety of different musicians and to test out that process, that collaborative process. But I felt like it would be important to correlate sound to that visual poetry. And then I worked with the Merge Art Collective. A woman named Mia at that organization asked me to compose a poem, which I did, gave them the video, and she went through the poem and composed a score to match up with it. And then we teamed up with four musicians and rehearsed repeatedly until it was polished. And of course, coming here to Vienna, I brought the score and met two Austrian musicians. So I would like to welcome them to the stage so that we can show you that collaboration live here.
So that's a visual poetic composition merged with a musical composition. Right. And the goal of that is to be able to reach out, not just to international deaf community, but also to the broader hearing community so that you all can see and understand the richness and the complexity that sign language has within it. It's badass. <laughs> so now I want you, as you leave, to go seek out your deaf communities, to collaborate with them, and make the world a safe space. Just as I want my boys to continue the lineage of the language, we want the entire world to be a safe space for the deaf community. But today, I stand before you and I choose to sign. <laughs>